The Moravian Church is one of the oldest Protestant churches. Starting as a Catholic reform movement before the term Protestant had even been coined. The Moravian Church has been around for over 550 years. And to me that means that there has been a lot of faithfulness within the church. We draw our lineage to John Huss in the Czech Republic in 1415, who was a Roman Catholic priest who believed that people should be able to read the Bible in their own language, to hear preaching that they could understand, and to be included in the sacrament of Holy Communion. John Huss preached here at the Bethlehem Chapel in Prague. He actively opposed the abuses of the corrupt church of his day. He was arrested, tried at the Council of Constance, and in 1415, was burned at the stake as a heretic. His followers rebelled and eventually organized the Unitas Fratrum, or Unity of Brethren, in 1457. They called each other brother and sister to emphasize that all people are related because they have the same Creator, and Christ gave His life for all people. They insisted that followers of Christ should not be violent or greedy, they opened schools for the poor instead of just for the wealthy. They taught people to be happy with the necessities of life and to be generous to those in need. Persecuted by the government to force them to worship as Catholics, many were arrested, some were tortured, and others killed. But they endured to testify to their simple faith that God wishes for all people to live in peace and love. By the time of the more famous Lutheran Reformation, the Moravian Church was already firmly established. They had published the first ever hymnals for congregational singing and began communities of faith throughout Moravia and Bohemia. By 1579, they had published the entire Bible in the Czech language. Luke of Prague developed much of the theology of the early brethren in the 16th century which focused on faithful living rather than on doctrinal points of belief. Moravian Bishop John Amos Comenius is often referred to as the father of modern education. He was the first to put pictures in a textbook, and he revolutionized the educational systems of Sweden and Holland during the 17th century. Sadly, during Comenius's life, the unity of brethren was nearly destroyed during the violence and persecution of the Thirty Years' War. In the early 1700s, grandchildren of Comenius' generation went across the border into Germany and founded a village on the estate of a Lutheran noble, Count Nicholas Ludwig von Sinzendorf. They named the village Herrnhut, or the Lord's Watch, and out of this new community came a spiritual renewal, a resurrection of the ancient unity that had a profound effect on the world. They began a powerful prayer ministry that went on around the clock for over a hundred years. Missionaries went from Herrnhut to the corners of the globe. St. Thomas, St. Croix, South Africa, India, Greenland, and the colonies in America. They went to slaves and natives, the last and the least, people who were ignored or even enslaved by most European Christians. Moravians founded mission settlements in the New World, the planned communities of Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, and Salem in North Carolina served as central hubs to support outlying communities. They brought their wonderful musical tradition with them, continuing to build instruments to compose and perform new worship music in the colonies. This was a revolutionary time. Moravians built schools for girls. Women served in leadership. Native Americans and Africans were accepted into congregations in a manner completely out of keeping with the day. In these planned communities, people shared everything in common as the early Christians did. They were cared for from birth until death. Each person had meaningful work to do, education and health care. Count Zinzendorf sought to bring together different denominations in the 18th century, believing that each denomination had a unique perspective that all could learn from. Moravians were pioneers in the modern ecumenical movement, founding members of the World Council of Churches and the National Council of Churches of Christ. We continue to work actively toward Jesus' prayer that they all be one. Music